Welcome to the environment and horizon scanning update for quarter 4, 2023. The World Benchmarking Alliance is launching a new urban benchmark that will translate the sustainable development goals and the new urban agenda to a roadmap for companies, outlining the clear commitments and actions that companies must make to help transform our urban system. Every other year, it will assess and rank the ones best positioned to have the biggest impact on cities and the people that live in them globally. Over time, the benchmark will provide all stakeholders with a mechanism for holding these companies accountable for their progress. The Greenhouse Gas Protocol Corporate Standard and related guidance are widely accepted as leading sources for companies to use in quantifying and reporting their emissions. There's been a recent consultation on the scope too guidance, which is likely to result in updated guidance being issued. This may include requirements to report more granular and location-based data, a new emissions impact reporting requirements, proof of additionality and alignment with voluntary standards like the Science-Based Targets Initiative. The European Union's Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism came into force from the 1st of October 2023. Importers of materials into or via the EU will now be obligated to report on embedded greenhouse gas emissions. There are several implications for this, including penalties for inaccurate reporting and additional costs for construction materials. Tariffs will also be imposed from January 2026. The aim of this legislation is to encourage suppliers to reduce the embedded impact of their operations. Biodiversity net gain will be mandatory in England from November 2023 for developments under the Town and Country Planning Act, unless exempt, and will apply to small sites from April 2024. For a developer this means that loss of habitat within a site should be avoided, and if this isn't possible, then habitat should be created on-site or off-site. A minimum of 10% biodiversity net gain will be required. If achieving the minimum biodiversity net gain is not possible on site, and if off site biodiversity units are not available, then statutory biodiversity credits can be bought, but these may be costly. This requirement will affect the commercial viability of some projects, reflecting the need for the industry to respond to the accelerating biodiversity crisis. The Institution of Civil Engineers and Expedition Engineering have recently released a major research report into the embodied biodiversity impacts of construction materials. The report is a first step to enabling those working in the built environment to understand how biodiversity is impacted. Throughout the life cycles of five common construction materials, new rules designed to ensure that products brought into or exported from the EE market are deforestation-free come into force from December 2024. This applies to commodities like coffee, palm oil, and wood that may be used in construction products. Companies importing any of these seven commodities into the EU will need to provide conclusive and verifiable information proving that the product did not originate from recently deforested land or contributes to forest degradation. Operators and traders will need to identify the plot of land where the product came from and prove that no forests have been cleared on that site since 2020. Fines for non-compliance are significant and can be up to 4% of global turnover. The Chartered Governance Institute for UK and Ireland have recently published a helpful report on greenwashing, which companies are increasingly being scrutinised for. The report highlights the importance of high-quality transparent and verifiable claims and the need for increased accountability. Waterman Group in conjunction with Circuit has recently launched a framework for material passports. The framework provides a roadmap to create a comprehensive database of information containing the identity, specifications and performance data for materials, products and building elements. The framework aligns with the forthcoming digital product, passport requirements under the proposed eco design for sustainable products regulation in the European Union's European Green Deal. This was a production of the Sustainable Construction Zone. Thanks for joining us and see you next time.